What's that? Um, okay, the, it was um, uh, it was a, it was a case where a fairly eminent medic uh, posited that the chance of two cop deaths in a single household could be determined by multiplying the odds together, as though there were no external factors, either genetic or environmental, failing to actually. Um, except the fact that both deaths were male, which also increases the probability of cot death, but also failing to do the elementary thing of comparing the probability of a double cot death with the probability of a double infanticide, which is what you actually yeah. have to do, which changes the odds from something like overwhelmingly guilty um, with a wrong statistical model to most likely innocent literally only more than 50% chance of innocence once you compare the two probabilities not effectively essentially saying uh, well if it you know if it isn't accident it's murder right, it's yeah. completely imbalanced but 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 people with literally people with oxbridge degrees who are eminent in the medical fraternity made that mistake barristers judges made that mistake so if if this extra maths is largely around statistics i mean i've never needed in my entire life to to work out the surface area of a cone. And if I needed to do that, I think it is a third pi, it, what, what would it be? It'd be a third height times pi r squared of the <laughs> radius of the base. I'm guessing. Sounds about right. Something <laughs> bullshit like that. Okay. But I've never needed to do that. And if I did, I'd Google it or I'd ring up somebody who knew. Yeah. Okay. On the other hand, basic appreciation of statistics, um, I use pretty much every day to a point where it's a kind of superpower. And so just having done what you might call, you know, statistics to A-level standard and having a basic grasp of yes, but actually um, is unbelievably valuable in business or in virtually any other context. Uh, how so? Like, what, what do you mean that statistics is a superpower? Um, well, <laughs> well, it stops you being stupid um, uh, is, is one of the things. Um, it also makes you understand uh, really important concepts like the tr you know the trade off between well the explore exploit trade off is a really interesting concept which appears in ai but it also appears in things like the studies of animal foraging okay so there's a trade off effectively if you're a foraging animal or for that matter you're an algorithm um there's a trade off between exploration and exploitation which is um you know obviously you're a total idiot if you don't exploit what you already know Okay, if you make no use of pre-existing um, knowledge. But you're equally foolish, albeit in the slightly longer term, if you don't keep exploring, but simply exploit what you know on the assumption that it will never change and your knowledge is utterly complete and incapable of uh, improvement or enhancement or, or adaptation. And so understanding a few basic mathematical concepts, I think, um, you know, I'd make algorithms to live by, uh, you know, one of the set texts for sixth form maths um, is really, really useful. I, I don't buy the... Um, actually, the other thing I don't buy is I don't buy the... A, a few creative people in advertising got really annoyed at more people being forced to do maths because they say, I would have left school earlier, I can't stand maths. Depends on the maths, because, I mean, it's worth noting that, um, you know, solving mathematical problems by effectively rewriting the question or, you know, redefining the problem, yep. okay, which is what an awful lot of advanced maths is, is actually a highly creative act. And you could actually make maths teaching actually almost a form of um, creative teaching if, yeah. if you got it right. You mentioned that you wouldn't be surprised if marketing was uh, became mostly female in the future. Why, no. why is that? Um, so partly just plotting the direction of travel, okay? Um, partly that... Um, uh, generally, as of now, I'm not suggesting it's innate, uh, women seem to manifest uh, a preference for working in people businesses slightly more. I'm not suggesting it's innate, it could be culturally inculcated, but it doesn't really matter because that seems to be happening. That point, you know, I don't, don't, don't want to go all Jordan Peterson sure. that, <laughs> but the weird thing that when you actually make employment uh, you know, more and more a matter of choice. Weirdly, uh, in some cases, gender differences actually increase rather than reducing. Um, uh, also, also, I mean, for example, I think there, there'll be a very, very substantial um, uh, Indian uh, contingent in marketing and advertising. Okay. Why? Uh, because in India, 
it's it's very high status. You have these extraordinary kind of universities, extraordinary high level of education around marketing, um, not only in universities, but places like Unilever, Hindustan Lever, which are kind of almost universities in themselves. And you can simply see the extraordinary talent, the extraordinary marketing talent um, that's been produced. I mean, what we have, the head of Ford North America, Indian MasterCard, both I think the CEO and the marketing director. You know, you go you go on and on and on, and and um, uh, it, you know it's it's absolutely clear cut that um, there's and, and okay okay let's not let's not neglect the base rate okay the yeah. one point five billion people okay which kind of helps okay yeah okay. Um, uh, but but I you know I, I I just find it interesting because. I think what often happens, if you're bad at statistics, you're not wrong to be angry about these things, but either you get angry about the wrong thing or you have the wrong idea about how to solve the problem. Okay? okay yep. Because you know, some degree of disparity will emerge from preference yep. because preference emerges from circumstance. Yep. Okay? And therefore, if different groups actually grow up in different circumstances... Uh, you would expect their preferences to differ. Hmm. And so if you don't account for that and you suggest that every single disparity is the role of either active or unconscious prejudice, I'm not saying you're wrong yep. to discuss prejudice. I'm merely saying that you're miscalibrating it. And that there are other factors going on yeah. that we need to take into account. Yeah, and it cool. worries me a bit because, you know, you know, a lot of this is kind of HR-dominated and, um, uh, you know... Uh, HR isn't necessarily the um, epicenter of sophisticated statistical understanding, if, mm. we're, if we're to be blunt about it. And so, you know, we've got to be, we just, we just I mean, as with um, the Sally Clark case, you know, uh, the, the cop death case. Oh, yeah. Um, getting statistics wrong is really goddamn dangerous. Um, and actually, I mean, I was watching. I'll just give you an interesting point here, which is that it's worth noting that if the data you collect is unrepresentative, then the conclusions you will draw will be similarly biased. Sure. Okay. And first of all, which is a kind of quote of mine, which gets adopted by other people, all big data comes from the same place, the past. Okay. And it's only reliable um, even if it's representative of what you truly need to know, which is a big if, it's only reliable if you can actually confidently say that the future is going to be very similar to the past. Okay, which in the short term may be a safe assumption. Over a decade, mm -mm, not so much. Okay. Um, I was talking to someone last night who had worked for um, uh, a big dairy company which delivered milk. And... Um, they had things down to an absolute fine art until suddenly the law changed and it was you were now allowed to buy milk from a supermarket. I mean, I, can, I, can, I think I can dimly remember when that happened, but it might have been it might have been earlier. Actually, it might have been the early sixties before I was born. Now, you know, at that point, everything you think you know, you know, is no longer reliable as an assumption. And um, the point I'm making there is that um, if you um, if you don't actually understand the limitations of your data or the biases of your data, yep. I mean, obviously quantification bias, uh, it's much easier to get data on things which happen to be you know, numerical or measurable in terms of SI-derived units. Yep. Okay. But if, I mean, if, if you fundamentally get it wrong, this is a case where you, you can be not just a bit wrong, you can be unbelievably orders of magnitude wrong about the assumptions you make. And one of the things that worries me, okay, is let's assume that the quality of people's statistical understanding is on a bell curve, okay? Um, then, you know, with, with a, you know, a, a, a little tale of very, very good statisticians, and then, then there are people who just know nothing on the left-hand side. I'm not too worried about them. People who don't know anything, don't possibly, let's hope, won't pretend to know anything. But what that does mean is that averagely good statisticians are going to massively outnumber really good statisticians. OK, well, that's true in lots of fields. I'm sure that averagely good plumbers, OK, uh, massively outnumber really, really good plumbers. But averagely good plumbers are still useful. They still do a good bit of plumbing from time to time. Yeah. And assuming the job isn't like, you know, the cooling system for a nuclear power station, they're probably good enough. OK, whereas, OK, averagely good statisticians, particularly if they're confident, 
are act- actively damaging and dangerous. Mm. Yeah. And so that, you know, it's something we got. It's something we got to be really, really alert to because yeah. it's like if you if you overlay the bell curve onto the Dunning Kruger yes. curve, yes, exactly. you'll end up with a very large <laughs> <laughs> proportion of very confident mm. but very uh, ill-informed people about statistics. Yeah. And almost anything else. Yeah, and, and particularly if they're confident or if they're simply overly preoccupied with the neatness of the model, yep. not with how the model actually differs from reality. Because um, mm-hmm. you occasionally get this kind of pure... Now, actually, let's be fair, a lot of very good statisticians absolutely ring what they say with qualifications. But then, unfortunately, they're reporting to people who don't have the same nuanced understanding. 